Alright, here we go. The match is on the way. We've got here spawning in the red color. It's Insanity playing Oranos. And on the top side in the blue, we have Kimo playing a set. <laughs> oh, I did the bad <laughs> things the wrong way around. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. People know what's going on. So yeah, sets versus Oranos on Tundra. That's... I mean, it's still, I guess, good for both. You know, Tundra is a very nice open map. It's good for Ronalds, but it's also very high hunt, which is good for Set. Um, I don't think Kimo played Set four months ago when I was casting. <laughs> yeah, Set is always kind of a, a back pocket pick for Egyptian players. I feel like anyway. If, if yeah, most of them can London. play Set. Yeah. Oh, he! I think he messed up his gold mine. Yeah, he did. Oh, that's a Ooh, that's a, a little bit of an oof there, but I'm sure he'll manage. Yeah, the the mining camp was at like 80 percent. That's actually quite a serious eco loss. Uh, he's gonna lose what, maybe 20 gold or so, just from not gathering yet. Uh, uh how long does it take to build <laughs> for one villager in seconds? Ah, uh, 27. So, roughly around that. 0.8 or 0.7 if you don't. I guess 20 gold is a quite accurate guess. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's going to matter all too much for his build, though. I assume he's just going to do like a 420 advance. Yeah. And yeah, you just got three on gold at that point, which he has, and that's gonna get his temple early enough. I am just very curious what he's gonna do because I don't think I've seen Wait, Kimo set ball? before. I'm I've seen his Uranus, I've seen his Hades, I've seen his Ra, his Isis, his Thor, his Odin, his, his whatever Greek, but his set, I've never seen it. I, I really don't think I've ever seen it before. One second, I have to do this. I don't know why this happens every time, but my score does not want to actually... Update. Okay, there we go. Or rather, reset. Okay, should be good now. Do you think Anubites? That... It's an option. I believe there was a period in time where that was kind of the meta. You just Anubite Serpent Rush the Uranus of Gold Mine and open maps. <laughs> Definitely seen that done quite a few times, especially by Joe. We do have a forward gold mine, so. Yeah, it's, it's an option. Kimo is a little bit slow, I must say, for that kind of strat. He's doing a 430, which mm -hmm. is fine, but it's not going to be some crazy early push and he doesn't have any extra monuments yet either mm. that's an interesting uh, that looks like tc grab to me yeah so what what is the plan here i guess you just try and do you even try and do aggressive things with your pharaoh and do a shift or something or is he literally just gonna keep it in the back pocket the shifting sands and take a tc and just boom kind of thing pretend, mm. pretend he's I mean shifting stance for set is always an optional thing he does not really need to choose to do it he can just do it when he sees an opportunity so yeah oftentimes though if, if you do go to TC and you don't get any like early pressure on the Noranos you often have to end up blowing the shifting sands on something else. Mm. Like just something minor, just to keep a couple units away from, I don't know, a push or something. It's often not that impressive of a shift. Uh, Kim's taking the back TC, which doesn't secure anything. Well, maybe the elk's in the back, but kind of secure anyway. Yeah. Would it have been too risky to take the front, you see, though? Because... Uh, the thing I... is, 
You mean the left one, I guess? The left one ha is a little bit more around it, but I think none of these TCs really secure anything. No. I think... So there's no... Yeah. There's not really a good TC to grab, I think. Yeah, I understand the reasoning behind this. Like, the left TC does have one patch of hunt. It's not safe, but it's at least near GC. But if you take these four TCs, Oranus is going to get all over your base. But if you take a backwards TC, you can quite safely wall everything off and kind of keep him out. So that way he's not going to take much losses from raids. Yes. And now Kimo knows about the back hunt and back gold. I mean, what am I saying, Kimo? Insanity knows. My instincts told me that Kimo would have to be the Oranos player because he doesn't play <laughs> set. <laughs> um, I mean, just about the starting gold nine. I mean, I mean, the back gold, starting gold nine. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's no gold back there. <laughs> if there was, actually, then, I haven't revealed the map yet. Let me. Yeah, I had a quick look myself, but no, there's nothing back no. there. <laughs> yeah. I still did not see the fullback, so that was a chance that I could have been a very hidden mine, but yeah. I don't think that happens on this map. No. Maybe uh, maybe in the past on the old maps, but everything is possible on those. <laughs> <laughs> a b an ambitious raid is coming in, but honestly I'm worried for the units because they can get yeah. ghost blocked here. Yeah, I wouldn't want to... nah. Yeah, he could just jump and ghost block them, and he could use his villagers to kill some Thomas. For sure. Well, the Aurochs coming in on this TC is gonna kill them off for some nice food gathering. Yeah, uh, but I really don't like that he deleted it in the front. He could have moved it all to the back. Just a little bit more patience. I think if it's enemy, yeah, it's enemy should kill the Auroch. Yeah, that's minus uh -oh. 300 food there. It's a nice little pick up there, but I think he needs to get out again. There's not much he can do here. Small win there. A, yeah, and also a surprising mistake by Kimo. Mm, yeah, they should be just all the way in the back, behind the armory, behind the TC on the edge of the map there. That's where the Aurochs should probably be deleted. Yep. So yeah, right now Insanity doesn't have much to do. He just makes a few units. Right now he's making Prometheans though, or he made one extra. Where's that? His no, I saw mini Prometheans. That's the second one. Okay. A lot of villagers on berries here as well. Gonna finish those up. And, you know, this is a berry chunder, meaning there's no goats. What would you think of a mixed uh, tundra with goats and berries consistently? I mean, there's always berries somewhere on the map outside, isn't there? Yeah, there's some uh, I mean, like a base spawn, like. Oh, you have some goats and some berries. But like oh, a, 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 a version where you have less goats and less berries, but always both, basically. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's that could be a new variation. Could have one instead of eight eight goats, you spawn with three or four goats and like five or six berries or something. It's just so nice because they are your scouts. <laughs> <laughs> Guess so. I don't know if you noticed, but I saw Insanity buy Husbandry, but there's no goats on this map. <laughs> so I'm not sure why he oh, bought no. that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> was that was that him who did that last game as well? Yes. Was that, was that Grass and Yes. Grass? Yes. I, I don't think he knows what the upgrade does. <laughs> I, it does make sense for any other Civ, but for Atlantean... Nah, don't buy that. That's just a minus 150 resource. Looks like Kimo is planning to move out to the left side here. He's made a couple slingers, a couple axemen. It's not a heroic though, because there wasn't really enough food to get him there. Not when he's pumping out all these units. Insanity is still happily hunting. He's on three TCs himself, so I think Insanity is playing this quite well so far. Mm. Did, did a really good garrison or something? Why did I hear a uh, Akimo wrote in chat he feels lag. 
Ja, yeah, I mean. I don't think it's that bad though, I mean. Oh, that's a lot of villagers going down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the thing is, for Kimo, it doesn't really matter. His logic is, um, if he feels the lag is um, making him play worse, but his opponent isn't complaining, then he feels that um, the lag is giving his opponent an advantage. So he wants to eliminate it. So it's less I about suppose. the lag being bad, but more that he wants to improve the uh, situation for him. And also, lag always favors the Atlantean, so... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, I, do, I actually don't know if that's still true. It used to be true in the past, but do you think it's still true? Well, I mean, the only way that usually applies, at least in my opinion, is because villager macro is easier. You don't have to place as many farms, which is really annoying and lag. But it's also the defensive macro. Usually you would be the one that reacts to around this macroing a lot. And with lag, the response time is bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess that goes both ways, though. If someone comes in under tower fire and they can't micro the units, yeah, uh, except that situation is just way more likely to be with Aranas on the attacking side. It looks like Kimo is moving Vils forward. I think he's looking to get this TC up or just fight with the villagers. One of the two. Nice uh, taking the TC. I, I don't know if that's going to work out for him here. There's a big shockwave. Mm, the Prometheans are looking angry. Yeah. There's a shift into the box. Shifts a fair Not bit of units, all of them. Yeah. I need some Actually, that tower is going down, I think. Yeah, I, d I don't like this box. <laughs> Not like this. The tower needs to be secured, otherwise it'll just die and he would just break the wall later and then still escape. Is Kimo losing here? No, the fight is quite close. If he gets this TC up, I think he's fine. If this does not go up, though... Eh, oh, he could fight. finish those two villagers at low HP. Mm. Yeah, the Carabalista's range as well. I think Kimo is fine here. You just won this, or at least for the most part won this fight. He's making more watches as well, and they're definitely helping a lot. Mm. Actually, yes, Kimo is going to be heroic very soon. I just checked Eco again, and he is super close to being able to click up. And he's also very close to being maxed on villagers. So I guess that really didn't hurt him at all here. Yeah, it's just one of those strange things where it seem like he's doing, seems like he's doing a strange play. And yeah, and the start out. of the fight <laughs> just looked really bad for Kimo. Like it, the, the start was not going well at all, and. The score was also looking very nice for the runners, but as the fight went on, Kimo's score rose and rose and rose, and he just kind of won it. And uh, it looks like uh, Insanity is up to Thea, so he's going to be heroic first, but I don't think Kimo will be too far behind that. He's almost up himself. He was also very nicely moving to that second gold mine on the left side, just to split them up a bit in case one gets raided or the other. Oh, that's actually not walled off. There's a gap. Yeah, there's a gap. And I think there's a gap on the edge of the map as well, anyway. Based, uh... based on the minimap. Oh, you're right. I, I was looking at the pond itself and I was not really sure, but the minimap does show potential. Okay, so where do you go from Insanity? I think you just go straight Mythic. I think that might be the best player, because I don't really see him pushing in here even with Heroic. Mm, maybe... That's a very big amount of Slingers. Yeah, maybe a Contarius push. Yeah, if he had the serious Momillo Destroyer army, then yes, but... Because Kimo is... Oh, he's actually buying Feral. What? You don't have any animals. Wait. Why? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> He's buying Feral. Remind me, what does that again? Uh, it makes animals have more hit points and armor and a bit more hack attack as well. 
The death not impact food at all. No. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking maybe he was gonna make some animals to eat them, but in the end he can queue them up whenever he wants. So maybe he plans to just make some during a fight. I mean, I guess it buffs his free units here. The crocodile. That's I mean, true. Gets what? 3.5 hack damage, a bit of hack and pierce armor. But I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't buy that. <laughs> Especially if you have no animals left anyway. Alright, so Mythic Age is already 40% for insanity. Looks to want to push in. He's getting his eco up quite nice as well. He's getting quarry, he's getting irrigation, 45 TCs. So his eco is looking quite nice. Hima, however, is doing kind of the same thing. He's getting carpenters, quarry, 45 TC. And his eco looks like he can go Mythic himself as well soon. Sanity is queuing up destroyers inside the palace. I like this. Try and hide them for now. And that way, hopefully, the axemen to counter them will come in later. How many are in there? Uh, three right now. Alright. He, he doesn't really have much pop space left, though. No, but he's getting fortified any second. A couple slingers here are not going to be doing all too much. No, honestly, he would probably like to get rid of them to make space for better yeah. units. So there's some termas here. They might be able to hop on these towers here with the Tatarian Gate. Yeah, that's a nice one. The destroyers are coming out. Maybe it's time for Fire Siphons now, though. I would mm. want to see Fire Siphons here. Okay, there's Ancestors being called on the Tatarian Gate. Architects coming on from Insanity as well. So I hope... Hopefully for him, that will kick in on time. Mm. These ballistas are, were all shooting the TC. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a mistake there. He could have killed lots of stingers with that, I think. Ancestor is doing a decent job actually keeping the damage away from the villagers. But now the siphon is actually quite safe. Like the scorpion man is the only thing that can really damage yeah. it, and well, after that, potentially mercs. It's actually getting the damage done, unfortunately. Wow. That's, that's a bit of a mistake. That Scorpion man is yeah. owning. That's big. Oh, the Tartarian Gate with Architects. The villagers are mostly dying. I don't know if the Tartarian Gate actually goes down here. At least all the villagers will be dead. Horus is up, so he could cast it maybe on this palace here and all the Carabalista along with it. Uh. Oh, there's a bunch of idle Maybe he triads. wants to save it for Titan Gate? Okay, the temple and avengers and animals are gonna clean up the Tatarin spawns. What do you think about that, saving Tornado for Titan Gates? Is it too greedy? I don't know if you're even thinking of that at this point. I don't know if I even want to do that if I were Insanity. Just go for Titan. Okay, there comes the Dryads. They were missing the whole time. Well, glad you found them. <laughs> They're definitely changing the tide here. But now the Siege Tower is getting free damage on this palace. Yeah, needs to clean that out. Kimo actually lost surprisingly little villagers. He's almost up to max again. I'm, he probably was producing villagers the second he lost any. Yeah, that's true. Okay, there's the tornado on this TC. Let's see if that goes down or not. Kimo oh, he actually dryads. took the, the tree yeah. too. That's nice. It's gonna get some nice extra values in, but the TC is getting siphoned down by two of them. You can pick off one of them and maybe the repair will be enough. I mean, there's destroyers it's as well. Of... Yeah, it's going down. TC On is On the down. other hand, Insanity's TC is survived. Yeah, and it's still got enough HP left to survive a couple dryads and stuff. It will only be one because he already took the three back. But look at that little oh raid mind. yeah it's quite painful killed the hero plus potentially more oh Sandy yeah can't even stay up the population right now that might give Kimo the opportunity to take his tc back yeah i think feral is at least producing some value here with these <laughs> i guess i mean i think it's mainly the avenger doing the real damage here but no no yeah. uh the 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 rhinos are doing serious damage i was watching yeah, that's four citizens dead now. 
Siphons keep popping out on time though to deny the TC, so that's good for Insanity while well, it tries to stabilize from this this raid. Isn't the Rhino offset with Feral kind of a budget swings? <laughs> swings? I like mean, look at the damage. It's not that fast though, but sure. <laughs> I mean a swings is super slow. I mean when it attacks at least. Oh he's yeah, oh Kimo's making more rhinos. What? <laughs> so he's trying to actually get value from this feral, and I guess the more he makes, the more value he gets there. I, yeah, they're, they're quite tanky. Like the yeah, the HP. rhino has been tanking the fortress for like 15 seconds already, and it's still alive. Tanking a lot of Argus too. Like the rhinos are surprisingly good. I do like Insanity's position here with the two palaces, though. Like these two sides kind of create a really nice center area that just keeps getting focused down by both palaces. And if he just keeps his fire siphons in there, this TC will never go up until Kimo can push back with catapults or something. And yeah, fire siphons are constantly attacking the catapults, that's nice. <laughs> Good usage there. Yep. Kimo is struggling a bit on gold himself. He's got three markets here. Two of them are producing caravans, but his gold is real. It's, it's auto queuing Merc, so that's probably why. The sell rate for wood is still decent, though. And he has a lot of wood. Oh, did you see this palace going up on the right side? Oh, oh no, I he, missed that. He's got boiling oil, so the palace is shooting at the villagers. Yeah. I. I don't think the palace is actually going down. Not with the repair, and actually some reinforcements coming in as well. Kimo is coming in with his own axeman to, I guess, kill the vills. Oh, there's a siege tower coming in though. Hmm, if he micros his citizens on that, then that shouldn't do anything. But yeah, th I think... Oh, Haini does it! The oh. citizens are on the job. Very nice. I think this is very good for insanity. Just this whole area, you know, villagers attacking a yeah. palace instead of mining. And Line. also, the other TC is also looking a bit better for him. Yeah. He has been pushing a little bit forward, but he might else. be overextending. Like, is he actually going negative KD hard here? Um, I need to watch. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, he's going a bit deep here under all these chariots and tower. And Insanity is actually missing house, and even outside of that, he's not quite full population. But he did mm. keep this palace up on this top side, so that's an annoying position. Oh, but <laughs> look at Kimo luring all of these units on the right side. That's uh, 5 population luring how much? 8, uh, three. Uh, 11 plus a free one. Yeah, yeah th that's uh, very nice, especially if he forgets about them and they're idle here. Let's hope he does not. Insanity is still missing a house, and I honestly want to. S yeah, okay, he's making fanatics. He's Wait, fanatics Insanity is missing a mana? Yeah, he's been missing one for a while, but honestly, he's not even been able to get up to 140 pop anyway. Mm. So he really needs to somehow stabilize and potentially consider trying to push that top t uh, town center now? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking that he could save some fire siphons and destroy us on the right fortress. So yeah, now, like you say, these units in the back are idle sitting there. It's... Yeah. It, it was a prediction I did not really want to make, but... <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, when these games become quite intense like this, it is quite easy to forget them. Actually, he moved um, half of them. Like he, I just saw the four Arcos. He moved them to the front, he, but he did not see the Destroyer and the Dryad. Kimo is definitely looking to build up this location again with the mid goal here. Mm. Again, Insanity is down a manor. That's a big mistake. Right now that he has the Eco to support the 160 pop, it's becoming a problem. Imagine if you add another eight units here, plus those two in the back. <laughs> yes. It's little details like that that make such a big difference in the end. Right. And Sandy's getting plot control and champion archers, so I mean, I suppose that's what he's getting out of it by not making more units. Kimo's trade is looking quite healthy, but it is not really in a nice position, though. 
maybe it's worth deleting those two most forward markets and only using the back one so that hopefully the trade moves behind that wood line. And Mitko goes down, so Kimo is on the ropes again, he's getting pushed in. Nothing happening on the right side though, I was expecting either Kimo to make a catapult or Sanity to do something as well, or both. Still medium infantry though from Insanity. Really? Yeah. Oh. So even the fanatics are just medium. He's getting, he's getting maybe a bit too many fire siphons. He needs to get more destroyers in the field, a, bit, a few more Arcus maybe as well. I'm just eyeing the 3k wood that Kim has in his bank. Yeah. I mean, look at that, the sell rates, it might not be really be worth selling them for gold at this point, it's already down to 36. So it's still decent, it just means to say that his bank is looking much healthier than Insanity's. But Insanity has his mana, finally. Well, it looks like some more was sold. But the fact is, as well, for Insanity, when you're on low resources like this, if you can make use of the market rates that Kimo is is ru essentially ruining, he could just mm. quickly, you know, trade I don't know 40 gold for 100 wood a few times and buff his eco that way, basically. <laughs> yep. Okay, some Termas even champion Termas coming out on the field. Interesting choice. I mean, there's a fair bit of chariots. Well, there were. These birds are doing massive damage. I don't yeah, that. Uh... Also, I think he could destroy the tower with those birds really quickly. Paro or Priest? Not attacking the birds, even though they're close by. Yeah, tower going up though. Oh, there's the, the Priest doing the damage. Oh yeah, that's... Uh, if this probably mid goes down, going down though, I think it's gonna go down. It's gonna make the production situation for Kimo a lot worse again. Doesn't have any other mid goals anywhere. Uh, he's making one now. I think Insanity mm. is finally getting through here. Insanity is a red shield for me now. Yeah, I noticed that. Ah, oh, yeah, yellow again. When is he going to actually use his right side palace? I'm surprised it has been idle. I, I for think so it's long. fine. He can cut the trade here. That's all he needs to do. I think after that, you can just do whatever you want. Just focus this trade corner down and. Kimo's got nothing. Mm, right, at this point, yes. I was just wondering, because earlier when it was a stalemate for so long, I was surprised that he didn't try it. Yeah, earlier definitely would have been a nice diversion, as a, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Insanity's got his, his uh, mana up, so he's on 160 pop, so he's getting a full value there. Kimo is not willing to give up though, he still has lots of gold in the bank for now. But the birds are definitely doing a good number on this trade. Really needs to clean up those birds to keep his gold going. Hmm, but Kimo's wood is down. Did he sell it? Yo, look at the wood rate. Yeah, it's, it's The wood nothing. is gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good opportunity for Insanity to just buy a bunch of free wood right now. Yes. Uh, though on the other hand, he might not want to make the raid better for Kimo again, so... It's a lot of siphons sitting there. Insanity, I, I mean, think... in the end, if he encourages more trading, it's still going to favor the one that's buying. Because he would get uh, 100 for 20, whereas Kimo would maybe get 30 or 40 for 100. It's, it's always going to be a loss for Kimo. Yeah, that's true. I think if Insanity wants to put the nail in here is put a palace up next to this TC. I think that's what he really needs to do to secure this location further. Kimo still has so much gold in the bank. But he might have to consider yeah, changing his trade route. He's trying to build so many buildings because, you know, he has the gold, but 
they're just not gonna go up. There's a palace coming up. <laughs> this is getting out of control at this point. Very bad. Yeah, I don't know if Kimo can hold on here much longer. I mean, he's making the mercs, but it's even that's not enough. He's got 57 caravans though. After all this, after so many have that have died, he still has well 54 now. My insanity is he's got the economy to keep going. He's taking a town center on top of it. I mean, I don't think either player really has max armory upgrades yet. Full bronze by insanity and uh, chemo's got a mixed bag. Some copper, some uh, iron, some bronze. It's going after the markets. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I'm happy just killing the caravans to be honest. <laughs> if I were insanity. Killing the markets just ends it for good. Yeah. It, the, all the idle time is also damaged, and the caravans are useless pop in that case. I mean, he doesn't know that Kimo has a lot of gold, so... Hmm, I guess maybe it would have been more beneficial to leave them up and kill caravans and make allow him to spend food, because that's actually what he has less of. So catapults being queued by Kimo on the right side now. So that's gonna start hammering down this palace. But the TC is up. That's that's devastating, I think. The TC going up for insanity. Now he's got 180 pop and Kimo is not even full pop, even though he has resources. That's through all of this. Kimo has remained top score. <laughs> Is that just the resources, I guess? Okay, the yeah, I, going up, I'm pretty sure. Market's coming up, but they're gonna go straight back down again with the fire siphons coming in from the left side. And I think once Kimo hits zero gold... Also, the caravans, do they arrive in time to drop? Well, most of them I think will. At least a decent number of them. It's yeah, imagine in. if they had gone down before they arrived. Yeah, that's a thousand gold that Kimo would have not been able to spend at that moment. But now, isn't it about time to finally use the right side palace? Oh, there was a catapult here, but I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> he is using, he's queuing destroyers into this palace now. At this point, it's the correct call, I think. Like, left side has been dealt with, and he, there's not much more to be done here besides overextending. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it'd be good to mix it up so that the mercs queuing one way, and then you don't have to deal with the mercs on the other side. Try and get yeah, some uh, value there. And he does have the sky pass that should just evade them, so he can jump over. <laughs> Man, another market has gone up, but again, the fire siphon is on top of it. That is painful. He's gonna get another load of gold, but I think that's still a lot of gold left from the previous run. All of them dropped. Oh, except one. Oh, that's the game. GG. 1-0 going to insanity. Oh, what a game, but I'm just gonna predict that Kimo will request only one observer. I am convinced. Well, it, it was insanity who had Red, I know, I, he will ask point, but I am convinced. That's okay, if that happens I'll just do the old Discord sc screen share I guess. Yep. Uh, Eco is quite even, Insanity just slightly ahead throughout the whole game, but you know, Egyptians typically have less resources than Atlanteans anyway, so that's pretty good resources for Kima. But I just, oh man, couldn't hold him to that TC.
All right, here we go. We've got Insanity playing Isis in the blue color. And on the top side, we have Kimo playing Isis in the red. So it is actually an Isis mirror. Okay. Now that's interesting. We haven't seen Insanity play Egyptians yet. Nope. That's uh, yet another god being revealed. And... Very forward dock for Insanity. He might actually try to steal fish. Yeah, I think Which is something is... I love to do. <laughs> it's it's definitely uh, something... If, if that happens to you, you just, you just feel like, ah... <laughs> yeah. Still defeated if um, that happens to you. What I like to do on this map is um, dock forward both sides. And like... Basically like this. And... The idea is to try to steal the front fish on the side where you docked first. And the second side is just to secure your own front fish. So that after he realizes you front docked, he can't steal your front fish because you already have the front dock to cover that as well. Yeah. And what sometimes happens is you might lose all the way in the back your fishing spots, but that's, that's only until you start fighting because those fishing ships will never be able to actually gather there without a dock. So once they start dropping off, you can just pick them off with your cabinets, and then you can pick up the fishing spots yourself. I mean, the good thing about stealing fish in this case is also that he does not need to be aggressive. He can just hold and defend his like the fish spots, the docks that he has, because he already has the advantage in terms of total spots. He just needs to hold it. Yeah. So does that Insanity actually has five on board? That's quite a lot, isn't it? Hmm. But there's still one more boar. Yeah, but I just so mean it's gonna slow down it, your fishing ship production a bit. I know. I know. I was just thinking about it in terms of whether there actually is enough food to use them there or if he has to move. So what is gold he is double docking so he is not gonna go for a super fast advance no i mean i don't think you want to do that right because you want to get docks on both sides but he's doing the the fishing steel i that i talked about basically yeah and both docks are forward too so that's nice to see yeah you should be but able he, to do he, what, like you said secure his side on this side and take these yeah, I, I just think his uh, right side dock is a little bit too far behind. It, it's like b between two spots. Could have been a little bit better. See, yeah, okay. That could have. This is his forward fish, so he could mm -hmm. have it here. Yes, exactly. That's the perfect position. Alright. So we will see how Kimo deals with this. And whether Insanity is going to hold <laughs> his position, or if he's going to try to be aggressive. <laughs> Did he really build a lumber camp for this one tree here? <laughs> um, realistically, it's correct, because um, the, the villager... Oh, I he's going to move off of uh, wood anyway. Yeah, you're not going to gonna stay dogs. here for very long. So he just wanted to keep it as close to the dock okay. building position. I suppose so. that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, he would just build houses non-stop, and that would, doesn't really boost his early game. But this decision minimizes walking time and gives him wood, so... It looks weird, yeah. but it might <laughs> actually just be the best thing to do. Fair enough. Alright, so Kimo's secured his forward fish on this side. But on this side, that's not going to be the case. Yeah, especially with the dock as well. That just means mm. you can hold the position very nicely. And yep. Insanity has also made the dock here now, so he can more easily defend this fish. Now he's going to have to extend this all the way back. It's the first one up as well. Mm, that's nice. Myth unit training time, not that important. So he is up in fishing boats and advancing first, but he is down one villager by Whoa. advancing later technically yeah so he's actually not down uh so basically he's just up in everything that's what it Kinda. looks like yeah i mean it doesn't have hand axe right now he was gonna get hand axe first but insanity could be getting that right now Hmm. 
And he's building further docks in the back, just to make sure everything is secured. Yeah, he's still building them here and there as well, so it's looking very good for Insanity here. Definitely knows what he's doing with Isis. Yeah, this is a practice build order. Like, the way he went to secure water is uh, a practice start. He's gonna do the obelisk thing as well, I like that. Yeah, and that, also that, that's not random Isis play. That's no. uh, <laughs> someone who actually has an idea of what he wants to do. Pickaxe as well, hand axe. I, I, I'm just not sure if these Obelix really have a, a place Ooh. like this early in the game, because um, this is what is enemy Isis gonna do? <laughs> Villager rush? I, yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't see what's gonna be moving on land until heroic. See, Kimo has got 14 on wood, six on gold, so he looks to be going heavy on classic fight. No? I mean, that's basically what Kimo always does, right? Okay, he's not making ships yet though. He's getting shaft mine and Persine. Now he's building an extra dock here so that way if he pushes this off he can get his own fishing ships on top of it. But Insanity's... Yeah. Insanity's gonna go up heroic already. Kimo is nowhere near heroic. Mm, yeah, this is a very good fast heroic too. Like, again. Practice build order. This looks nice. Probably more fish here as well. That is the sanity actually maybe an Egyptian player who was just hiding behind his secondaries? Be be hiding behind his Oranos. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> because this really does not look like an Oranos player who just happens to pick Isis because the tournament rules asked him to do it. I mean, this he, really yeah, doesn't look... I mean, we'll have to see how this turns out, but his build order alone is definitely... I, I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> why why not just here or even around this tower for that matter or here? I think that's laziness. That's that's yeah. That's all I can think of as well. Alright, so Cabinet's coming through, he's gonna deny the fish for now, but I mean he's already up heroic, so he's gonna be able to reclaim that with his heroic age timing. I think Kimo is also kind of looking for heroic age now, he's getting armory up, getting more on gold, he's got the food banked. This, this is a push. This mm. is one fast track push incoming. Very confident. Where is the Leviathan? Where did it spawn? Left side? It must have been this side, yeah. I think, is it inside the dock? Yeah, it's inside the dock. Is oh. he making any boats? He did lose a Sphinx there. He is not making oh. any boats though. But maybe and Kimo looking... can advance. Yeah, I think he's looking more for a quick... Oh, he's making boats on this dock. Why cabinets? Why not siege boats? Yeah, maybe at this point you could make the siege... I'm surprised how he's not doing it on the top side, though. He's got more fish on this side. So... I mean, I, yeah. I, I know that um, siege boats are just way more resource efficient in this case, so... Maybe he... Maybe it's because he fears Kimo hammer ships. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's not heroic, so... Not yet, anyway. I mean, he is finally advancing. Oh, look. Imagine if there were houses there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's... Camels? What? What? That's... Uh, uh, really? Making sea stars? Uh, he can make another elephant. I, I think he made camels because he didn't have the resources to make an elephant. Uh, I, I, I generally mean, don't know. That's surprising because he can make one now. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't he be able to do that earlier? He's not Yeah, that tower is fish. gone. It is going to be a bit of a race now for Insanity because, again, his, his food... Oh, TC? What? Did he not scout this? Or notice that? I think this is actually maybe a good bait of AE because the priests are in the perfect position to deal with this. Like, he trades a few villages and gets rid of all of the AE. Yeah, and he has his own AE to counter. Yeah, I, 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 look how this turned out. I think that uh, that was a wasted AE. Yeah. He, he needed some units here. This, with the elephant there, is going to be able to push this off, though. Yeah, but all it comes down to is some idle time. Because the moment that he's heroic too, um, Ooh, and making good the units... Midgall's not going to go up. 
Oh, yeah. That's painful, actually. And these villagers this... are running around. The priests are yeah. out of position. You know, the thing Kimo... I'm worried about is Kimo holding water economy and just snowballing. Yeah, that's true. He's got docks on pretty much all the fishing spots here as well, so... Insanity is not gathering fish, but Kimo is gathering fish, like here as well. And more siege showers coming through again. The mid goal. Uh, would you sack that? Would you sacrifice more HP on these siege showers to kill that mid goal? I probably would have there actually. Mm -hmm. Now that it's up, Kimo can make his units. Hmm. In the few seconds that he can make some units, I mean, honestly, there could have been a chance that Kimo just deletes it again. But now that it's up, he can actually just properly kill it. Yeah, I, Kimo probably needs to make a market. Oh, he's just made one. Okay. But now he lost four siege towers for this, so it's also quite expensive, actually. Yeah, but I mean, it, AE did get cast, and it's for the most part been dealt with. They're looking to get some extra value around, but I don't think they're going to be able to do much. And now again, this mid goal needs to go up. But yeah, I mean, Insanity is not going to have any food. Maybe a little bit. Oh, Kimo's making ramming ships. Wow, fishing boats there. Yeah, Kimo's fish eco is very nice. Oh, TC is going to get denied once more. I think maybe Kimo could consider a second mid goal. I mean, his villager count is definitely quite low. Only on 29 versus 40. The ship difference is huge. Yeah, that's definitely making up for it. And look at the eco bank. Oh, you like, can go mythic. The... Does, do you <laughs> want to go mythic here? What does it bring you? Uh, it I'd rather brings get you mythic. <laughs> because. This is the last gold he's got. He's got 1500 gold, he's empowering it, so slightly more than that, but... After that, I mean, you're not gonna go here. This is also kind of not really feasible. That, maybe? Even that? I don't know. But I think if Kimo goes full pop, though, he could possibly take a fight. Insanity shaking ETC as well. I think the, the longer this goes, the better for Insanity. Yeah. He just has to watch his KD. Because Kimo is very good at doing that to you, that he just kills you by having a high KD. Right now, Kimo needs to be careful with his units. Some more ships. There's still a Leviathan in the dock here for Insanity. That's probably could get some value now, taking down docks. Probably forgot about that one. There's a second, second mid goal, so his production's gonna go up. He's actually going quite heavy on camels. Double camels with heavy camels. Might, might work out for him at this point. Against basically pure chariots and a few camels. Wait, heavy cameras. Yeah, he's got heavy. <laughs> That's interesting. Alright, <laughs> it's just going for it. Yeah, I mean, I guess at this point his army is strong enough and his eco is supported. Yeah, there's no stopping that. He just needs to ghost block the siege tower and that's it. I don't know if he saw mm. the siege tower though. He's gonna yeah. get a few hits I off at least. And in cases like this, I just usually ghost build in advance to prevent it. Oh, where's all the oh, villagers going? Where are they? they going? Did they just go right here or something and they decided to path? Yeah. Oh, they're just going through the army. They don't care. Well, it could be a little of a momentum swing by his own oh, army taking down Insanity's army. Yeah. They did tank a bit. And, yeah. the, mom and the, the thing is, now that he kills a lot of units through that, it's just gonna snowball in the fight, right? 
Yeah, and Insanity <laughs> is not going to be able to reproduce. He's only got one mid goal versus two. I, but there's it's no way Kimo did that intentionally just to, to snowball the fight. I, th he, I think he... I think what happened is he didn't do it intentionally, but once he was there, he was like, He, well, he realized I'm it was doing good, it. right? <laughs> I'm gonna have to <laughs> learn too deep. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a thing where stuff like that happens, but as a good player, you realize, wait a minute, this is good, I just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now Kimo is way ahead in population. Should be able to secure all of this. I mean, this TC again did not go up, but it's not the end of the world. He can still push this. Insanity is up almost twice the villager count, though, but he just doesn't have the just the economy. Just the, I don't know. Doesn't have the fishing ship eco. I think it's more the KD is just That's too heavily true. in Kimo's favor, and he just can't keep up. Yeah, with like, like, look at these camels. More camels coming in right now. I mean, this yeah, is not even rock camels, but it's it's doing the job. <laughs> I mean, realistically, rock camels just give you a bit of HP and speed, which is really, really big. But when it comes to just killing stuff straight up, yeah, the damage is the same. And they can still dodge arrows, so that's that's not taken from them. Kimo is running low on gold, though. I mean, this gold man has run out. This is his only option to get it with this now. So he's gonna have to move more villagers over. And I guess in that sense it is good that he went to TC because he needs more villagers on gold and for the most part I think this is more than half his current villager count on the gold. So far neither player has really been pushed off of water though. Again, Insanity is not gathering any fish, but he's not removed from water. But I don't see him... Ah, man. Do you go spe Okay, he calls it. Do you go next game? Is <laughs> <the quest>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't hold the onslaught of camels. Heavy camels came in clutch. Mm. Nice. Uh, I yeah, think... Come back. The, the villager AE bait. If he had used the AE to protect the siege towers and for a proper push, instead, like... What does he gain from allowing, like, from, from maintaining the TC, keeping the TC down, I mean? If he had actually allowed Kimo to spend the resources to build it, he would have had less resources because the TC, it takes time to pay off. And he would still have AE. And he could properly push through where it matters, which is hmm. denying Mikdol and keeping it down. Yeah, Kimo was very good at delaying this. Even the Mikdol's being killed every time, it still wasn't enough. Salt and Fora, I guess for both. Oh, Sandy never had Salt and Fora, but I guess he wasn't fishing really very much. Spawning in the blue color, playing Kronos, it is Insanity. And on the right side, in the red, we have Kimo playing Ra. But he's running into Kronos on Oasis of all cases. Yeah, that's that's a good pick by Insanity though, I think. Kronos is, you know, for all his matchups, I think against Ra is where he shines the most. Yeah. So, nah, this is a good pick by him. He knows what I he's, was uh... literally saying just a minute ago that this pick is not going to be good for Insanity because he cannot pick Oranos and Kimo can't pick Oranos, so he would go into a very Atti favored map where he can't pick the best Atti. And then Kimo goes Ra? And maybe I, I... don't think Kimo expected Kronos here. Yeah, I, I, I would not have expected Kronos either because. Like, I, I would expect Kronos against Oranos as a very bad situation, so Kronos wouldn't really be something that happens. Did he maybe try to bait... Uh, like, did Kimo think there was going to be a mind game 
of baiting the Addy and then like going north or something to try and counter it? Well, Insanity did say in the, in the chat before the game, come with your Ra as a taunt oh. to Emo to make him play Ra. Either, you know, there's multiple layers of mind games going on or <laughs> maybe just you, not. You just got baited? <laughs> maybe. What? I mean, okay, but I, uh, I, you can't. You, so you lost your first game against Oranos against this guy. Yes. Yes. Obviously, that means he's gonna have a good Chronos as well because it's functionally the same. And Ra also this. does worse. Like Set is much better against Eddie than Ra's. Yeah. I mean, on this map, I'm not even sure about that, but. On this map, you you could be right that Ra actually has advantages because this map is not really one that offers that yeah. too much, I mean, except that you can get all the goats. I guess if you look at it from a numbers game in terms of favorable matchups, mm -hmm. Ra has a lot of favorable matchups on this map, but not against Kronos and Oranos. Yeah, <laughs> when I was casting uh, like like four or five months ago. Basically, every single time this match came up, or this map came up, I would always argue about how certain gods have home maps. But while Oasis is considered a home map for Ra, it's not really one that actually exists because there is a god that counters Ra on his own home map, and that kind of denies it in tournament yeah. almost all of the time. So, no matter that Ra beats basically everything on this map, just because he loses to one thing consistently doesn't basically mean that the moment Oasis is selected, you cannot really go Ra. Unless there is a very hard counter to Oranos on this map as well, which would kind of make it a mix-up. Well, but you which... mean this argument is to be made for Odin there, but Kronos might yeah. be able to bully Odin on this map as well, so... Yeah, I, I was thinking at the start that maybe um, Kimo was predicting that mind game, but he probably just got baited, so... If Odin or Thor actually, I mean, I think mostly Odin, I guess, works as a counter to Eti on this map, then it would create a triangle of Ra over Norse and Norse over Eti on this map, which would be really fun. Okay. Well, the action is about to begin. Insanity is up 4 minute 10. It's a bit late, but he's going to be able to do this Oracle push. The Valerie gets cast, and Kimo should notice this any second now. It's up Ta himself. If he can pick off a Pharaoh, that would be quite painful for Kimo right now. Definitely needs that Pharaoh to do whatever he's planning to do. I think he's gonna die. And they're both 4 speed, yeah. He's gonna block it. And that's one dead Pharaoh. So no villagers, but still the var Pharaoh is uh, still a lot of resources lost by not being able to empower. Alright, the tower with nice wall chips and houses is gonna be attacked, but should be defended here. He could deconstruct it if he does plan to push into this. I don't know if that's what you want to do here though. But he could. <laughs> I don't know. Is is this worth pushing into this gold mine with, with this tower gone? I mean it seems fairly open. Oh that's a big box. E except that the tower is again destroyable. Yeah, needs, <laughs> I kinda just need like one house here or something. To block the uh, power off. To answer the question, no, I don't think so. That this is really something to push into. So, what do you think Chrono should do here, really? Let's put on a little bit of units, a little bit of pressure, take two TC and go heroic, or just straight heroic? Um, honestly, what I what is usually the point that completely destroys Ra against Chronos is implode. Like implode, and then just all in flood afterwards is usually like. Oh immediate game over and also a very high comeback potential if Kronos is behind so I'm I wouldn't really think too much about the short game and I would think about what Kronos can do with implode later yeah and until then I would sub say just harassment pressure booming all right so just... here we go TC is going to be grabbed by Kimon he looks like he's going to commit to this he might shifting sands these units into the box and the second wadget as well might be able to get the TC up. Some reinforcements coming in though. Or oh, maybe that's going to get shifted. No, he's not going to use shift yet. He's holding on to it. Interesting. Pl oh no, he's coming back for it again. <laughs> he does not want to play 1 TC. He wants 2 TC. 
Very, very greedy, I would say. He's still, he has to shift and two wadgets, but the more units that come in here, the harder it's going to get. Hmm. He's trying to get onto those wadgets, and the heroes actually arrive, but yeah. they won't kill it. This is going to be a problem. He wants to shift, but you also don't want to move the wadgets out of the fight. Oh, the Pharaoh goes down. That's oh, a no. really nice pick again. But the, the hero Thomas getting punched down. Kitchen knives doing work. Yeah. <laughs> and now most of the heroes are gone. Yeah, and the Thomas mm -hmm. cannot dodge, so the watchers are going to absolutely massacre them. But honestly, he has killed some villagers. Like, some died. Yeah. Lots of villagers are heavily yeah. wounded, and the TC was delayed so, so, so much. Yeah. Oh, that's... But if that means... Oh, he's pulling back the low HP villager. That's nice. Might be yep. able to pick off one more, though. Although the watchers uh, are getting work done. Is he hitting the TC at all? No, he's not. Okay. Mm. Interesting. This, he's got 600 wood chemo. That's probably a bit too much. Surely he can get Shadoof now and start his farm transition. Put more... Yeah. At the same time, TC take... going up for the Atty. How close is the yeah. Atty to completing his... It just started just... it. Hmm. So, what do you uh, think? Yeah. Atty just going 30C immediately? He has the eco for it? Yeah. I don't know. I think, actually... I would say 2TC is fine and just go Heroic Mythic. Don't go 3TC. You don't want to delay this. Because right now, he's on 2TC, Chemo. That means he has less units. He can make less units with his gold because he's going to have to make... He made a TC, he's making farms. So when he comes out for this gold mine, he might not be able to hold a nice 2TC. You mean with 3TC, he would be too slow to gold stuff? He might be. He All that, right. that's, that's what I think. At least it's a risk. That's true. Because I think that is usually the best win condition for Kronos is either gold starving or getting enough value from um, killing villagers trying to get gold. Then again, if he goes the 3TC route, he can. He would be late, but he would allow Kimo to make an army which he could then implode and delete. And then he could gold stuff him. I, I guess. But and, yeah, maybe. But maybe we, by we that will see. Maybe by that point he's Osiris already. Like, you never know. Does he beat implode with Osiris though? He might. <laughs> I mean, it's chemo. So. It, it's it's gonna allow him to at least, you know. I mean, Osiris is not gonna die himself. He might get temporarily pushed off gold, but it might be able. It might be enough for him to retake gold with Osiris. And if you can keep the Ra in heroic age, I'd say that's a big win. Yeah, that's very true. I've definitely had my fair share of struggles against Atlanteans on this map, and mm -hmm. every time, it, it, the only thing that ever works out is me being mythic with Osiris. If, if I don't hit that, I just die. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. But those wedges are the... oh, very angry. Heroes. Yeah, it's three of them, but there is enough heroes here for now. So Kimo's mm. going straight for this gold, but that's see Kimo is, is smart in that sense that. You know, he thinks Insanity is going booming, well he kind of is. But, he wants to get as much gold as he can, but looks like Insanity is not having it. Yep, he was there in time to do yep. some pressure. Uh, Kimo is not quite up heroic yet, he's getting skin of the Rhino though. Yeah, I think Insanity is probably still in the fine position, but you might want to... Maybe he's already done that. No, he's still making units. I think you want to cut units, go heroic here first. Mm hmm. Or do you think he can keep fighting classical here? Because Kimo's going to go up heroic any second. And that's uh, what you're going to have to expect if you're in Sanity as well. I would say that staying in classical is a risk. Because your win condition is later. If he uh, fights, that would be the one way how he could fall behind in a way where a comeback is basically not not possible. But if he goes the heroic route and falls back, then he's really close to mythic and then anything is possible. Kimo... Why still is not up heroic? What? 
Why? I mean, he's making Spearman and Axeman, I guess. There's the Shifting Sands. He gets a yeah, reasonable number of heroes, but it's... Yeah, I mean, it's going to secure him the gold for a while. I suppose, really, that's all that Kimo cares about. If he can get gold, it doesn't matter what happens. Oh, he's going for the third TC. This is probably the best play here for Kimo. If he gets this TC up... And this is also why I think maybe Heroic would be the right call here. If he comes, yeah. in, if he comes in now, you know, having not fought fought any of this, comes in now with full pop and Hyperion. Mm, yeah, Chaos is so nice. Yeah, wipe out a Wadjet and four units and just melt the rest with some Carbalista and Satyrs. To be fair, he has also gotten pretty decent picks with his fights, but... Hyperion full pop push might have been stronger. Oh, the va the hero termos are a bit too close to the front. They're getting picked off. Yeah. Carbalistas okay, are guess. definitely getting their value in, though. Yeah, he has a lot of them. They're oh, doing nice villagers jobs. coming in to try and deal with them. Let's turn around and kill these axemen first. <laughs> yeah. Could not pick up the wadgets. The hero termos have fallen. That's a lot of Carbalista now. Mm. I mean, he's at least forcing a lot of idle villagers yeah. out with them. But I think the problem is that's not that important because Kimo's 3 TC. He's happy with this. Yeah. He's mining gold. Um, yes, but the Kronos was 3 TC much, much earlier. So, what's the economy? Like 25 to 62, so. Hmm. See, this fighting is delaying Insanity's own heroic age. Yeah. Nice and this is the one way where he can just get snowballed by Ra really quickly. And, I mean, these are Ra skin of the Rhino villagers, so, you know, they're extra tanky. If villager fighting means Kimo can gather gold, he's happy. <laughs> yeah, he's basically paying some food to gather a lot of gold. Because villagers are just military units as well. Yeah, especially with Skin of the Rhino. And there's so many Carbolista, they... The villagers are getting good value here, actually. <laughs> I mean, right now they're maybe overextending a little bit, but... Still, they're mm. picking off... They're picking off... I think... Kimo is stabilizing users. really hard right now. Yeah. Oh, wait a second, that's... Uh, that's big reinforcements, or what is that? So many Carbolista. I don't know about this. I, I'm just looking at the huge amount of Slingers, and at some point he's gonna reach critical mass where Slingers just do really well. Against classical units, at least. <laughs> the moment the Kronos is uh, heroic, everything changes, of course. I'm gonna kill the Wadget with Carbalista again. It's not gonna work out. I don't like this. I don't like this by Insanity. He's not getting anything done. Carbalista can't gold starve, because villagers will just kill them. I mean, maybe he's just happy killing units, trading. Yeah, but, but... he's losing so many of his own resources into these Carabalista. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's good. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he's just happy doing it, though. <laughs> I guess. But it makes him happy, but it's not going to win him the game. More villages being pulled. Sekhmet coming up from Kima, so he's going to have extra population as well. Yeah, and also Sekhmet versus Carabalistas is quite nice. Yeah, this Carab is going to tank so much. They could even make, you know, if Insanity switches to more Mamillos, he can get Wait, did he cancel? Did he cancel segment? No, he's up. Oh, wait a sec. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I just saw the the queue disappear, and I was like, there was no way that was a full minute already. <laughs> but I guess that was <laughs> a very fast minute. Well, um, I mean, we saw it when it was like 80% or something, so... <laughs> ah, okay. That explains a lot. Um, but it's... It would be so big if he had Imperion shortly after Sekhmet, because turning the Scarab, that would have been really big too. Yeah. Because, like, same goes for the Rap player, who does not really have a counter to the Scarab at all. See, this this is exactly what you were saying. He's just yep. baited into classic fighting, and he will never, ever go heroic this way. 
And this is the the snowball because now Kronos does not have a comeback route because by the time that he gets to implode and through this route, He's the Ra lost. will be so <laughs> stabilized that he yeah. can just rebuild the army and it doesn't really matter to him. Yeah, he will still he, have he gold. Needs to... He'll still have probably Osiris by that point. Yep, he needs the timing where Ra basically can only afford that one army that he has on the field and implodes it away. That's uh, that's how it's supposed to be done. Yeah, this this is not gonna be it. And I mean, Kimo's moved to this gold mine as well. It oh, it's only did wall of this side, so that's a nice benefit for him. But I mean, he still has the extra gold mine already. Mm. On top of that, so he's gonna have plenty of gold for a long time. Okay, Scarab is finally dead. Sanity's almost up heroic now. Alright, he's going Hyperion. I think Insanity... I don't know if that's worth doing manually, but heroizing a few villagers and just making a few more. Good usually... question, because that would... How long would that take to pay off? Because you would have to... You're paying basically three times the cost of a villager. For villager. So it, it, it does pay off, and I mean it is it works faster as well, but yeah, not that much, ten percent only. At this point, it's I think uh, earlier yes for sure, but at this point I think it's an investment that's a bit too late. Yeah, at this point you just get you go ups instead. I think at this point he just dies honestly. <laughs> well, yeah. he's gonna have one. Tiny power spike here through chaos, but there's nothing worthwhile to chaos. You can chaos the scarab, but it might still attack buildings anyway. Like considering it's already deep in his army, it's gonna be the he is gonna be the target yeah, that's, anyways. That's not a that's not a good chaos. He's still spending all this DPS onto one eighty seventy five percent pierce unit. Unit. <laughs> pierce. Okay. I think he didn't know about this wall, or he does. Nah, he doesn't care. He's just gonna hammer it down with villagers. I think Mythic, Mythic is quite close for Kimo as well now because yeah, and definitely not he, for he, he has the food, he has the wood. He can just sell a tiny bit, and he's gonna be up immediately. A bit concerned about the Arcus choice here. Maybe you want to make Contarius here. Because right now your Arcus are just getting hard countered by Slingers and... Chains. Yeah, why would he do that when there's so many Slingers already on the field? Yeah, that doesn't seem like the best. I mean, best as a Rounders it makes sense because you can back it up with uh, Dryads to tank. And you can back it up with Birds for DPS too. Which is both things that melt again, um, the Slingers, but... You don't have that meat shield now, so... The destroyers coming in the mix though are definitely gonna help in this fight. But Kimo should be able to go up Mythic shortly. He's got 2k wood, so he can probably sell that off. Mm -hmm. A couple of units chilling here. I mean, the double wall. Okay, Is so there still a window for implode now? Ah, but look at his eco, he's nowhere near Mythic. Yeah, I'm just imagining if he was able to click implode right now. If he if he if he could click it right now, maybe. But mm. even then, I don't know because Kimo is got so much resources himself. Yeah, like how Kimo secured and both gold sides, I don't know. This, this makes it really hard. Yeah, this gold mine might be finished soon, but okay. Yeah, and he's still saving the middle one. How much was left on that one? One thousand five hundred. I yeah, only like, saw it for a moment. Like one thousand eleven. Oh yeah, yeah. That's really nice that he managed to save that that too. Not really... I don't know, do you just want to move here instead with your army instead of fighting under this tower? He's getting heavy units, that's quite nice, but that's gonna delay his mythic again. <laughs> Maybe he needs even fortify TCs. And Kimo's gonna go up, right? Yeah, he's gonna go he there. has everything. So I suppose all that Insanity can hope for is that these heavy units are gonna... Allow him to win a bunch of fights. 
and then... He has a micro well here too. He can't just focus for the a siege tower with no. his Arcus. He needs to do damage quickly and probably here as well. Because this this is depleting. But I mean, Kimo Osiris. is setting up a trade. Mm, there's one way for uh, um, Kronos to still win this. Which would be to just completely drain the gold, but... That feels unrealistic. One, we have once Osiris hits. I mean, this Pharaoh is almost dead, but he can. Yeah, he's gonna heal that up. Okay, very nice. It's not gonna be delayed in that sense. Mm. But I mean, this unit should melt these art, these axemen here. But that's still a decent amount of chariots too. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're well. They have bone bow actually, so they have extra range. <laughs> I love that upgrade. Probably one of my favorite upgrades in the game. <laughs> Not really one you see very often. I mean, Sekhmet you don't see that often, so... Yeah, I think whenever I play Ra, I try to make Sekhmet more viable every single time. Oh. I don't want to be careful with these Arcas, though. You don't want to make too many of them to the point where you can't push. Right now, they'll do okay, focusing down chariots. It's kind of trying to push on that side, but... Mm, this is a very dangerous moment for Kimo. Because he could lose so many chariots in the moment. If Insanity focuses this, he can get a few salts off the Pharaoh. Oh, he did get a few salts off, shots off. So I lost like 50 HP there. Oh, he's going going after him. Oh, that's going to be a lot of damage on the Osiris. Yeah, I need to jump into the tower probably and delete a wall chip. Oh, he uh, also the retarget was really nice because he he re micro his Arcos really early. Oh, oh that Again. Osiris is not really getting value. Nope. And this Arcus, I guess that's the main value here. I mean, Osiris is at least kiting the entire army, but... The mummy is dealt with. Oh, there we go again, another focus fire. At least Insanity is on top of focusing that down. But now yeah. he's gonna lose his army. He's getting surrounded by camels and chariots. Another... Attack. And now there's not really enough units left standing to really hurt Osiris. I mean, he, at some point Osiris does not even need to attack, he just needs to be there to be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> just kite. Just out of range. He, he is a very tanky unit after all. He can now he move, have... he can move towards the sea showers now though and use that to micro garrison. Yeah. Honestly, he should have had one next to him from the very beginning. It was kind of a shame that he didn't. Oh, and those camels are gonna find something very juicy up there, I think. That's a very blue, big blue dot. Oh, he's hammering down the wall. It's open here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. After all that yeah. rolling. Alright, Cyrus getting some good value here through the destroyer. There we go. Wait, why is he bashing down the wall if he's already past the wall? With the <laughs> he, he should know that there's right. a gap. That's the game being called by Insanity, GG. Kimo manages to come out here on top. Very well done by both players. GG. Maybe G -G. your call of going to TC would have been better after all. Because he did get stuck. Yeah, he got stuck. He, he just made a bunch of Carbalista and that means he's going to have to put like, I don't know, 12 on wood, 8 on gold to produce those. <laughs> and then he's never gonna get Heroic Age. Plus he made Marmillos as well. The start looked nice. He had killed lots of villagers, he delayed TTC a lot. His own second TC was not slow. Small favor for Kimo in the KD ratio. wonder where that's that KD ratio advantage established itself. Because, we know, the Carablisters are 4 pop units, they should technically be killing 2 units to 1. Mm. But the KD ratio is not reflecting that. We want to thank our MetaPlace website subscribers. Your contribution helps us keep hosting events. As we reach higher subscription goals, we can increase the price pools of the events we host. Check out our subscription page using the link in the description. And remember to collect your perks. We will see you the next time.